From the Standing Stone Farm Studio right outside downtown Nashville, it's time for the most ridiculous sports podcast in the world. So sit back, relax, and listen as Bobby Butler and Brandon Bond crack open a cold one and talk all things hockey, pop culture, and complain about everyday situations. It's the Pucks Out Podcast on the Penalty Box Radio Network. Welcome into the most ridiculous podcast of sports and pop culture. I'm Bobby. He's Brandon. Hello. You can find us on the three majors of social media at Pucks Out Pod. Now let's crack open this cold Mayday beer. and Let's get after it. As always, Pucks Out is powered by Mayday Brewery, the official beer of Pucks Out Podcast. Join them Tuesday for Singo with Ozzy and Thursday for Bingo with Kelly. Uh, and go on out, make some new friends, uh, have some pizza, drink some cold beer. Uh, and have yourself some fun. Uh, today, we have got a bunch of news from inside and out of the league. Uh, don't forget to check us out on Patreon and Twitch to support the show. How are you this week, bud? I am doing good. I'm tired. I am gearing up to get back in the office. Um, as you are, uh, I guess it's different for, for me and you because, you know, you're just going to get into the office uh, for the for the yeah. very <laughs> first time, essentially, you know. So, um, but, uh, you know, gearing up for that. Just been playing a lot of Xbox, doing some dog sitting this week. Uh, you know, got to get uh, got got Big Brother coming up. We're gonna do you know some Big Brother fantasy as we traditionally do. So you know, no sleep for me at all with uh, you know new project, and uh, also got to stay up all night and watch all the live feeds because you know that's just who I am as a person. Um, just uh, you know, hanging out, brother. I'm just chilling what about you dude oh uh, dude just you know hanging out uh get ready for the school season to start you know both the first year teaching and uh you know going back to my master's semester. as well as yeah, semesters as, as well they call them semesters yeah. they don't yeah it's not a season uh <laughs> didn't i say school year i thought i said school year you said school season. season i'm getting ready for the school oh. season to start yeah <laughs> oh well okay uh <laughs> well i'm gonna call it a season it's fall <laughs> fall is the season you're ready for the fall term to start <laughs> There's like a thousand things that they've called that they call this, you know, trimesters. Listen, so, you we've know, been running semesters. A, we've been running a sports podcast for a couple of years. It's a season. It's the 23. That's true. Season. I mean, hey, I'm yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. But I'm just saying, don't embarrass yourself in front of your new found peers who are going to take yeah. the word seriously. Yeah. Like I'm also a whole job is now, words so now. That is that is a season over there. So it's all, it's all combined into one. Yeah. Uh, but also season 25 of Big Brother. Uh, August Ooh, 2nd, I think. See? Yeah. Hey, I never, no, no, don't try to sell this, Bobby. Nobody said seasons weren't a thing, okay? Season, <laughs> you said you're getting ready for this school season, all right? There was no interpretation of what you were indi- indicating was the season. I will not be, I will not be made a fool of here. You know, I'm trying to keep you on your feet, trying to get you ready for Big Brother so you can expect the unexpected. That's, That's all. Oh. Just doing my part to prep you. See, hey, being a, being a dummy is not a way to make me expect the unexpected. I expected that <laughs> fully from you, Bobby. So it was right on. It was you are you are little sister right now. You're so far from Big Brother. All right. <laughs> uh, but all right, let's do a quick fit check. Uh, I'm rocking the hometown boy, uh, the Kevin Byer Titans jersey. Uh, also, because I'm super psyched for the new uh, uh, Titans Oilers edition jersey coming out. Uh, what do you got? Uh, me went with the uh, the Dortmund, uh, the Dortmund Pulisic jersey. Obviously, he does not play there anymore, but I'm not getting rid of a, a dope uh, soccer kit, uh, you know, just because a guy doesn't play there anymore. Nobody even in this country even knows that he doesn't play there anymore. So it's no problem for me. They see Pulisic and they'll be like, hell yeah, USA, Team USA, baby, let's go. Uh, and then uh, in honor of of uh, Bre- uh, Brett's cousin, Buzz, I wear my pineapple hat. Uh, I don't know if we'll have any video, we, but it's not upside down, Buzz. I wanted to throw that out there to you. Just let you know that people are still allowed to enjoy the fruit despite the other connotations. Uh, that is brought into play by an upside down pineapple. All right. So just a, a salt, uh, just a, a Ron John pineapple hat. Nice. I'll, uh, I'll edit that in post and just flip it up. 
Perfect. Uh, but all right, let's uh, let let's hop into some news. Everything you need to know about what's happening on the ice. It's time for news from inside the boards. Oh, man, this one was a big one. I saw this about two hours ago. Uh, Patrice Bergeron uh, has retired from professional hockey uh, in a statement that the Bruins released today. Wow. Uh, Very unexpected. I mean, I guess you knew it was coming at some point. I mean, there's only so much uh, you can ask of of a gentleman. After that season, the heartbreak, I guess I could see it happening. You know, he's won some cups already. He's done. Uh, wow, that is uh, it's an end of an era for sure. I think that the the yeah. Uh, I think that the Selkie Award will soon, very soon, be the uh, the Selkie Bergeron uh, Award. Do Do you agree with that? I don't think we lose Selkie altogether. Uh, I yeah, yeah, I agree with that, and I think I think thirty seven hangs in the rafters in Boston. I mean, twenty years. He's he's yeah. been at the his entire 20 year career in Boston, three cups. I mean, that is, is that correct? Uh, captain for how many years? Right. Uh, I mean, basically the Selkie winner, uh, what, I mean, how many Selkies did he win? Seven or eight? I'll look that up. Something basically. like that. He, he is, he is, he is, uh, he has almost 1300 games played, uh, 1294, just under 500 goals. Uh, over a thousand uh, points for them. I mean, not just absolutely a, a, a stellar career. Not uh, not overly Iron Man like, but but definitely never a season went by where he wasn't there in some capacity, uh, even after missing some games. Yeah, and I don't really know early in his career how that that was. So don't you know? Don't come at me hard and be like, no, for fifteen years, you know, he I never missed a game. Well, you don't, don't care. Uh, he he was great is is what I was getting at. Uh he has won the Selkie six times more than any other player. I thought it was more than that, obviously. Ooh. Uh because I said I think it's more than that. Uh uh but yeah, six <laughs> wins, ridiculous, man. And and lately, uh he became almost automatic. Uh, you know, where I think uh, one of the we've done three awards battles to this point. You've won two. I've won one. Um, and I, th- I don't think there was any year that one of us didn't have him in one of our choices, either beginning of the season or after the se- yeah. you know, middle middle of the season. It usually was middle of the season because we're stupid and we're like, yeah. oh, well, maybe <laughs> it'll be somebody. So, may- hey, this year it does it does make it a lot more interesting. So let's go. Since we have no main topic, we can expand on this a little bit. Obviously, that opens up a void in a not a, not necessarily a sure thing, but a pretty consistently taking up a, a nomination spot. Uh, this season comes up, he stays retired. Who are your three nominees for uh, the Selkie? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but he had a record 12 consecutive nominations for the Selkie uh, breaking the, I mean, he holds the record for the, uh, uh, for that. I mean, 12 straight seasons is insane to be nominated for one of the major awards. Yeah. Um, He broke, yeah, yeah, every year he broke his record. He's got a bunch of other stuff on here. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I don't think that's a record that'll be beat again, to be honest with you. No, um, no. I, there's I think so it's much hard parody. for any award to have 12 straight Go seasons, for it. but name your, yeah, I don't think that don't that's think happening, yet. but oh, name yeah. your three, name your three Selkie finalists now for this upcoming season. We won't have to, we, this doesn't have to be on the reward, but Ooh. just like first, first take you got who, who's going to be the three guys. Okay. Uh, Mitch Marner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Barkov. Barkov, if he plays the season, and... no question for me. Hmm. I I think Ryan O'Reilly's gonna have a comeback here. Okay. Uh not a bad call. He's usually up in that in that in that running for it. Um, I like a guy that was nominated this last year that um that I feel could come back strong, and that's Nico Heischer. 
Uh, I think that obviously with it being was, wide open, uh, he was Devils, teetering for me. Um, you know, he was there last year, so we'll see. But I, I feel that the Devils are an improved team uh, with more age uh, behind them than necessarily. Hey, it was a flash in the pan. Um, as we've been kind of talking about for yeah. the past few years. So I love your first two picks. I'm going to agree with those. Um, but I think he, I think he sure is the, uh, is the third guy there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Ryan Riley's kind of like a, a stretch pick. And oh, that's a, that's a, that's a sleeper pick team. I went very, I went very yeah. dangerous. Didn't I, Bob with, I went going with two people <laughs> that were a guy who that was were nominated already on the list. <laughs> that we're already on the list. And another guy that has already won one. I was, I went, I went, outlandish <laughs> with that one so uh, I, yeah i mean it's a um a way too early as a way too early prediction yours was much better in terms of you know who cares if you're right we're not going to remember it yeah um all right moving on your favorite uh fantasy player sebastian aho got himself a new deal uh this is Sebastian. Aho it's good to see the islanders Carolina. paying uh, people yeah, <laughs> um, he got an eight years, nine point seven five million dollar extension. Uh, that's wow. a big hit. You know what? I think he's he's earned every penny of that. Worth and it. Let's yeah, hope that, worth it. You know, eight years is a long time. And nine seven five sounds very team friendly uh, in this day and age. Uh, he got his length of time, but uh, you know we've talked about the difficulty of, of how few ten million dollar players on rosters have even advanced that far in the playoffs. Uh, so I think that he probably could have uh, waited, you know, to whenever he was a free agent uh, and got 10, $11 million to go play for some scrub team. I think he really likes what they're doing there in Ca- Carolina um, and who can blame them. I mean, he's still very young, right? I mean, he's, uh, uh, I think he's 24. Hopefully it does not. Uh, it gives me the hurricane. Nope. It gives uh, so Sebastian Ajo age should pull the Carolina Sebastian Ajo, right? He's especially 26. a man that just it did for me when yeah, I typed so, it in. It pulled. Uh, it pulled the defensive version. It pulled up the the contract and stuff <laughs> afterward, but it but it put the other one ahead. So, um, no, excellent contract. Uh, love it for the team. They still have a good few years i'd say in their window right uh, i don't know that they're ma- having any major yeah. losses i will have to do we'll do that a little bit of a deeper dive when we get to start uh, uh way too early evaluations of the divisions which is probably coming up here soon uh that we're already getting to that stage to where yeah. if we want to hit them all um we might want to start doing that so i will be interested to yeah. see that division in particular. Yeah, we might. Yeah, we might start a little bit earlier this year. So maybe Let's instead do of doing, it. you know, a division each. We can episode, do, we do smaller. Like three, maybe we do like two teams. Yeah, yeah. We can do smaller, so smaller about groupings each team as well. Um. All right. Uh, after a career year, Vince Dunn uh gets a uh, gets resigned by the Kraken. He gets a four year, uh, twenty nine uh million contract. I don't like that. I guess that one's not AAV or whatever it is. Um, it's not his, it's not averaged out like the other one is. I don't, it's, I always find right. that ESPN will change how they tell us a, the the number amount, but yeah, Vince Dunn gets, uh, it, a, you know uh, why that is, is because, well. well, it's because some get front loaded, some get back loaded. And so yeah. like, so like, so if, if somebody's getting a front load contract and like getting, you know, 15 million the first year and then like 3 million the back year, you're not going to say, you know, you would just average the 19 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I love the, love the Vince Dunn. The Absolutely. Love Vince Dunn. I have been a big fantasy Vince Dunn guy for quite some time. Um, loved what he's doing. Loved the Kraken signing him. It, he had an off year the first year uh, when they grabbed him in the expansion draft, but it was just a, a, a not a bad team, but a young, uncohesive team. Uh, and last year we saw what they can do with a, a little bit of chemistry behind them. So I love the signing of Vince Dunn, getting him locked up. And, and what looks like a pretty decent price, what is that, 29 4 by 4 So seven three five, a good payday for him. I think 
worth it uh, for uh, an offensive defenseman like Dunn. Before we move outside the boards, uh, that uh, recently the uh, the Scottsdale Mafia man himself, Alex Galchenyuk, has been sued for four hundred thousand dollars by a major Canadian bank. So that's two calls he's going to have to make. Wow. I just wanted to <laughs> note. Um, yeah. <laughs> four hundred, four hundred thousand, four hundred thousand is probably a little bit more than that vet minimum you're going to be catching, brother. <laughs> uh, and so um, we will see. Well, you know, updates will be provided on Citizen Alex Galchenyuk, as he is not a professional hockey player. We'll just be talking about local citizens, and uh, and we'll keep that. That we'll we'll be on we'll be on Chucky watch. All right, so. Uh, the latest update <laughs> for Hundo. That's wild. But now let's jump into outside the boards. Now that you know what's happening inside the boards, time for the rest of the headlines with news from outside the boards. We have a new highest paid quarterback in NFL history. Justin Herbert gets paid uh, five years, $262.5 million. Uh, whew. I did not see, I got I got blindsided, but when I saw that, this uh, when I saw this one this morning. Well, in my opinion, worth it. I think that he has yes. the, I think blindsided, he has the tool but set. I agree with it. I, I think he has the tool set uh, to be. I, I I mean I I'm not comparing he's not Patrick Mahomes by any means he's not even Josh Allen to me or Joe Burrow but he has such a set of of tools that he could be all of those guys uh not Allen as much with the running style uh but just that big physical if he can figure it out if he can get a Mike Williams is great. Keenan Allen's great. Hopefully, Quentin Johnson is great. But if he can get a big time number one guy, uh, I think that uh, that is a guy that I would, uh, you know, put some money on. Uh, obviously, he has suffered one of the worst losses in his career that playoff loss against Jacksonville. And so some guys can, could be out after that and be, hey, that's in their head forever. Uh, but you know that a competitor uh, that is, you know, gets a two hundred and sixty-two million dollar contract generally will use that as a as a fuel to his fire for the rest of his career. Do I think he'll win a Super Bowl? No, I just don't think that San Diego is an appealing enough. Uh, I mean, it's a great weather, but just not an appealing enough football location. Um, with fans and the status there. So we will see if he can ever win one. I would not be surprised, but I just don't think so. What about you? You think, you think Herbert ever he's in a, he's in a bad time with a lot of great quarterbacks that already have great teams. Uh, in my, in my, yeah, opinion. I think, yeah, I mean, I think he had, like you said, he has the tool set, but they, they he needs weapons around him. He needs he needs a lot of weapons, and the Chargers need to make some changes if they want if they want to be Super Bowl contenders and have a real shot. They're going to have to do something to compete with with the big dogs. I mean, they're, if you line them up against Mahomes, I think even if you line them up again against uh you know Jacksonville, I think Trevor Lawrence and Jacksonville wins again right now. I don't disagree with that at all. Um, I. Sorry, lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. I think that there, this is one of those rare instances in which I think that a coach is very important in the NFL, but it's not everything. Uh, you know, a good coach is, it, but when they're great, they are a difference maker. And I think that if there are a couple names that come to mind that if we're coaching there, I my outlook changes. Uh, Sean Payton, if he went to San Diego, I think they win a Super Bowl in four or five years. Um, I just think that coaching is a big deal 
uh, for a guy like him without that roster size. So who is the current Chargers coach? I forget. You're, uh... Yeah, Brandon Staley. I think he can be, a, a, you know, he's young. He can become a better coach. But right now, I'm with you. I think that, you know, there's it only takes one to get that weapon. Um, uh, but I'm just, uh, I'm just not sold that he's ever a Super Bowl winner, but I do agree that he's the, the face of that franchise and, uh, you're not going to get much better than, uh, than Herbert. Um, all right. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, possible suspension over not cooperating with the NCAA over level two violations. Uh, there was a couple level two violations that was going to get him a slap on the wrist. Um, one of them included like buying a cheeseburger for a recruit or something like that. Um, but because of his refusal and his lying to investigators, mm, it becomes games. Uh, yeah. Guess what? Lie. Yeah. Well, lying to an investigator is a level one offense. So right. his handling of the situation is worse than the actual issues. Um, but, you know, the, I think that. There's a lot of things. The NCAA is a clown show right now because a couple of weeks ago, the University of Tennessee got caught in what is considered the worst cheating scandal in the history of the NCAA. Um, but, and this is wild, apparently the state of Tennessee has laws that prohibit University of Tennessee football from losing bowl games and postseason uh, uh, play due to breaking any rules. The fact that the, a, a state can just say, you know what, our state team, you can't it's a, illegal I, you can't punish I, them like right that, i agree which with is that. wild to me it, i agree with i mean if the ncaa is its own entity and so if the ncaa's record books don't have that that's fine but like i, mean, I always found that vacating of wins was always like the most ridiculous thing to me like yeah if i if i nope, beat you like, if i beat you in basketball and then it's like it comes out like, oh, we reviewed the tape later and like you stepped out of bounds here. And so I still won. You can say I didn't win, but I won. I'm, you know, Reggie, but we, that yeah. Reggie Bush is always our argument. Reggie Bush I was, I was about won to say the Reggie Bush. Heisman. Yeah. Reggie Bush won the Heisman. Yes. Like he technically doesn't have the Heisman. He won the Heisman. Cam Newton yes. technically didn't take any money have any proof of taking any money from from boosters he took the money you know it's one of those things like sh we should have proof in order to give them any punishment but we're this is not an innocent until your judgment of somebody doesn't have to be innocent until proven guilty we're not yeah. sentencing them to jail time. We're taking away their stick figure dude yeah. we're taking away the Heisman or whatever or not like if I'm Reggie Bush I'm 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 guarding that thing with my life. Like I'm, you know, the gun people come and take it. I, that's me, Reggie Bush. I'm like, come yeah. and take yeah. it. You better, you better send, you better send Barry Sanders and Charles Woodson and you know everybody. Troy Smith better show up out of yeah. nowhere. I'm I'm telling you, you better come and if, take and if it. That do, and if that doesn't work, the NCAA could certainly give OJ Simpson some money. The boy, the dude knows how to get his trophies back. Right, exactly. Yeah, and so Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee, and, and so I, in my personal opinion, no, no program should be just faulted for an old coach that happened two years ago because he refused and got fired, you know, through this process. It's so silly. Yeah. If they focused on real things and real, you know, problems. Yeah, it's, it's an issue if, uh, if. Jim Harbaugh gave a credit card to a, to a young recruit to go and buy as many hamburgers as he wanted as many, whenever he wanted. That's wrong. That's that's, but to say that something that happened every day between people, Hey, let me buy you lunch or whatever. It's so stupid. You know, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's just no, like, I agree. Let's, yeah. the let's be is, is legit as stupid as, as dumb as I think Jim Harbaugh is. And I'm glad to see him in trouble because I don't really care if it's righteous or not righteous because I'm not, you know, I'm, I am who I am, Bobby. I'm good. I'm glad to see him get in trouble, but it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. I'm yeah. glad to see him get in trouble because I think he there broke needs to be the nuance rules. to this thing. Yes. I think he broke the rules. So I'm okay with him getting in trouble. It's not like they're unfairly punishing him, but it's just, 
dumb, dude. It's just, yeah. especially now. That and what he's really getting in get trouble get for is lying about it. Figure out how yeah. to that, and like that's, reg, figure out how to regulate the pay. You know, figure that out. Let's get yeah. that. Now we got. Now we do have a problem because for the longest time, everybody asked, "Hey, can you pay? Pay us? Pay us a little bit? Pay us a very little bit?" And the ball was in your court for so long that you could make these options and decide how to pay. You get the structure. You get to set it up. And then nobody, you know, no court case, no nothing would have happened with it for at least a long time. But you never did. And now it is the wild, wild west. Lane Kiffin made a great point the other day at SEC Media Days that uh, that college football is in a state of disaster right now because it is a pay for play, essentially. Who can pay the most money? And as much as I dislike Lane Kiffin, he's right. The bigger booster schools can get the best recruits. And then we have free agency where these guys can just pop and go to a new school and get paid again. And I'm not against the leaving school and going somewhere else. That never made any sense that a coach didn't have to lose eligibility, but a player did to me. So I'm not worried about that, but we do need to have some sort of regulation for things that we've talked about on this show before. We don't want that young high school kid that his opportunity at football opens up a college scholarship opportunity to go play at MTSU or Tennessee tech or Austin P or one of these schools that he's more than likely never going to play professionally or anything like that. If we just end up with 30 schools across the nation, we're in the same, you know, we're not, we're, we're not being helpful to we're only paying a few to spite everyone else. And so it's a, it's an issue and it's a problem that I think needs to be uh, addressed at the college level fairly be for real. You know what I'm saying? Don't come in with a power trip, really address the issue that so that not everybody's going to be happy with it, but a majority of people are happy with it and we're not leaving kids hanging out to dry. It's not an issue for, Jim Harbaugh to buy a hamburger for somebody. Cause essentially what you're saying yeah. is Jim, we can be at a football recruitment event. <clears throat> Jim Harbaugh can't go to the food truck and buy this kid a hamburger, but he can give me the look a and I'm a staffer and I go get him a hamburger. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, how st- you know, that's stupid because I'm a student or whatever. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, Saquon uh, Barkley uh, looks to take a very team-friendly deal for running very back. Very team-friendly. Uh, the Giant Star um, agreed to terms on a one-year deal worth up to $11 million, uh, uh, and he gives himself a chance to beat the franchise tag. He will get $2 million uh, of signing bonus, and he will be at training camp. Uh, that's a wow. very good deal for someone of his caliber. Very good deal for the Giants. Um uh... It is a very optimistic deal by Saquon Barkley. Hey, yeah. I'll take this 11 mil. And you'll get me next year, right? Saquon, they're not going to get you next year, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love him. He's I mean, a game changer. He's, he's, he, went to the, he went to the Lamar Jackson School of Sports Agency. Yeah. Um, so, so very interesting deal. I mean, he wanted to get in there. He wanted to play. Hey, play for your contract. Show us you got three, four more years. And hey, I'm I'm rooting for him. I hope he gets paid. I hope this doesn't bite him in, uh, bite him in the ass for sure. But I fear that it will. Uh, you know, look at Dalvin Cook. Look at Zeke. Yeah. Uh, at least at least those two had the presence of mind. Get paid. Get paid. Get paid. Uh, and yeah. Zeke. Yeah. That was leaves dead Josh Barkley hit. the only running back left. Uh, uh, Josh Jacobs is now the only franchise tender uh, who has not signed uh, and uh, his uh, who is left unsigned. So that didn't uh, help him. Josh Jacobs may be sitting out this season. He might. That didn't help him. Josh yeah, Jacobs. No. Josh Jacobs is sitting at the he house right now and saying, "You son of a bitch! You son of a bitch!" Yeah. He he's calling his agent to have him fight Barkley's agent. He's like, I'm done. He's like, go fight him right now. We're rolling. We're about to go fight him. 
Um, all right, so uh, moving on now. Uh, Bronny James suffers cardiac arrest during USC workout. I saw this online. Absolutely horrible that that happened. Uh, I mean, I don't have all the info on it. I don't have how his recovery is going. I don't know if you do. Uh, I think it's been very private. I just saw the news story this this morning, and I had the exact same thought, man. Like, oh, my gosh, it's so terrible. Whether you like LeBron James, you hate LeBron James, this kid has never done anything, you know, to you or, you know, specifically. Um, this it could end a kid's career. Uh, he was never going to be his father. He was never going to live up to that expectations, but he had his own style. He had his own game. He was a, a better three point shooter uh, and was obviously working out for USC. It's super awful, awful to see uh, that this happens. And you hope yeah. uh, you hope that this is a, a fluke incident and he's back and he's healthy. You hope it's not a Lucas Scott situation. Brandon Wheeler and I were talking about it and like how sad will that be if his career is over before it starts you know he, he he deserves the opportunity to succeed or fail under his own metrics in my mind so super sad to see yeah yeah um let's see uh titans released the new oilers jersey uh there's a link in the doc if you want to look at it uh they look dope obviously there's been there's always been controversy over the titans use of the oilers jersey i have kind of been of the mindset where i don't really care because it literally does not affect me at all uh what millionaires release jerseys wear uh i used to be of the mindset that personally i think that football teams belong to the cities and not you know i don't really i don't really care for the oh well i don't really care for the oh well you know the owner is the same i was like sorry I, I, I truly don't sorry care. honey like I'm the, so, the culture sorry honey the Sorry, honey, we were married for five years, except for now we moved to Chicago. So we got to start the clock over again. Those first five years of marriage didn't count because we moved cities. That's my argument, Bobby. <laughs> that's my argument. Yeah, this, that's a marriage. It's in, in, the history, in the history of that marriage. There's nobody else that was a part of that. It was pl- the players that are in the city on the team when it moves, move with it, right? Yeah, right, again, Bob? like I said, I don't care enough to really care. But and over the years, I've because you know I've become I, I am a Titans fan. I've kind of you know, uh, but again, I used to care more about it. Now I don't give a shit. But they are fucking sick jerseys, and I will be buying. The thing is, oh. I, I if I couldn't claim Warren Moon and Earl Campbell, I would be a very sad man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm claiming them. They're I've been of the t- mindset that both. <laughs> That when a team moves like this, both I believe that the uh, fans who were from Houston, who were fans of, of them when they were Houston, can still claim Warren Moon and all that. Yes. And so can the people in Tennessee. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I not don't saying disagree with that, that. Titans don't. Houston I, fans. I just think, yeah. Oilers fans that came with, you know, came as fans to tenant when they became the Tennessee Oilers and then, and then the Tennessee Titans. Those fans despite living in Houston, are always allowed to be fans. I don't disagree with that, Bobby. I also don't fault that person that as soon as the Houston Texans showed up, showed up, if they dropped everything and became Houston they Texans did. fans. I'll tell you what else I wouldn't, wouldn't care about. If they dropped the Oilers when they became the Tennessee Oilers and became Dallas Cowboys fans. I would be okay with that because then it's like, okay, well, I'm rooting for uh, my well, I'll fault area. Them for that. I mean, I'll fault them be only because it's Dallas Cowboys, not because yeah. it's a yeah. changing for the team in the state. That's what more of what I exactly. Yeah. That's the only example I could, I could think of. So that is my, that's my big, big argument is that. Yeah. Now you, I truly believe that the Texans have no claim to any oil or stuff. That's no, uh, no I don't no, like no, it no, when no, tech, no. like, I don't think the Texans have any claim to that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, but yeah, no. And uh, divisional opponents. Blue. It's you, and that color. is my divisional opponents too. You got to be one or the other. You can't be a Houston Texans fan and a part time Titans fan because they used to be the Oilers. Right. Do you agree with that? Like, you got to pick. You got to choose your allegiance and stick with that. Yeah. They're divisional In, opponents. Unless you have, unless you're like a weird outlier. Yeah, there, see, unless you're like a weird outlier, like where you were a lifelong Houston Oilers fan, and then you moved with, and then you moved to Tennessee with them, 
maybe that sure. one person gets to say that they can be well, fans the, of but, both. But that's about but it. The, well, no, you can be a Houston Oilers and Tennessee Titans fan. I'm okay with that, but you can't be a Houston Texans and a Titans fan because you lit because you were once an Oilers oh, yes. fan. Yeah, I agree. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like that 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 is that is completely Agreed. irrelevant yeah. to you you can cheer for another yeah. team when it doesn't affect your team. My a lot of my family are UT Vols fans. And so what I say is I'll cheer for Tennessee because I want their team to win as long as it doesn't affect Auburn. As soon as them winning a game affects my position, sorry, boss man. I so that's that's what I'm saying. Every game in a divisional opponent in the NFL is important and you don't want them to win any. Yes. In my mind. Agree. Um, all right. Let's move in. Uh, we had our we kind of talked about the selfie things, but I think in, over the next week or two, uh, we will be uh, covering our way too early coverage of the of the NHL teams. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop in on to our joke of the week. The weird Corey Perry. See, I don't like this. I don't wild i think that i think the first read was a good one now now i'm overthinking it. outlandish each sixth chick sat on a stick a little tongue twister and downright dumb You're kidding me. it's time for the joke of the week this one is good what did you find for us uh yes we were having difficulty locating it and this one is absolutely perfect so let me actually get to the right screen so I can read it. <clears throat> Trader Joe's recalls two types of cookies. So not one, but two types of cookies because they may contain rocks. Um, I haven't read it, Bob. You're usually the guy. I usually find the headline and I make fun of the ridiculous headline. And then because we're in a clickbaity world, you go in and read it. And then it's like, oh, there was a random guy in the <laughs> factory that like threw a bunch of rocks in there or something, you know, and it ends up not being what it sounds like. So <laughs> I don't know if you've read, but were there actually rocks in them? Uh, all it says is Trader Joe announced a uh, Trader Joe's announced a recall of two types of cookies, stating that they may contain a foreign material rocks in a statement on Friday. <laughs> uh. They gave the sell by dates and that they so have been re, uh, removed uh, from sale or destroyed, and that any shoppers who purchase these products should throw them away. So, not really sure were, how rocks were, end up. They, in well, they were like foreign, that. and also they were foreign rocks is something that we need to. That's why we're throwing them out. <laughs> like good old fashioned American Canadian rocks. rocks. No problem. But like, oh, these rocks are from Mexico or from Canada. Like, no. Wow. You know, like, get them out of here. Like moon rocks. That would be OK. We would be <laughs> that, that, that would be uh, it has to be like of a higher societal yeah. status in order for us to be OK. Uh, the almond windmill cookies and the dark chocolate chunk almond cookie. So I think that this is legit. Like this is one of those classic situations where. Joe brings in his rock collection because he's got a rock, you know, club meeting after the he's got a geology meeting after after the shift. And they normally have a big bucket of almonds and they're making the cookies. And so somebody grabs the almonds and throws a handful in. Well, Joe wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Grabbed these foreign rocks. It's just throwing handful of fulls of rocks. And in the middle of the night, in like a cold sweat, he wakes up and realizes what he's done. And he contacts all of his contacts at Trader Joe's, um, which I would imagine are not many if he's the guy that threw the rocks in there. He's like contacting his supervisor who's going to get that message like six well, hours later. Oh, I, I mean, but to be fair, his, his name is on the door. It's his company. That is true. This that is, is true. But he didn't make any he didn't make any valuable trades uh, to, in order to allow the rocks True. to be in there. So they're going to recall them. They're going to put on the packaging that now that they may contain rocks and then they're going to send them back out and they're going to be good uh, <laughs> uh, because that's the big problem is they didn't tell people beforehand that rocks were a possibility. Yeah. So. And honestly, knowing the people who shop at Trader Joe's, they'd be like, ooh, rocks. I mean, like, <laughs> rocks. Like, I'm thinking, rocks I'm thinking, my, my chi, 
I'm thinking of uh, Stephanie's sister, Amanda, who is absolutely in love with Trader Joe's. You know those people that like Trader Joe's has some of the weirdest stuff <laughs> and they just try to sell you on it. They're like, yeah. oh my gosh, have you tried the new Trader Joe's chocolate that's like made out of lizards? You know, or is this something dumb like that? Like what? <laughs> like, no, I haven't. Yeah. And then like, so like they would, if it said may contain rocks in it, they would use that as a selling point. Like, dude, have you tried this new rock candy? Oh, yeah. Like you definitely to, contains um, rocks. Oh my gosh. You have to immediately call your dentist <laughs> after you have this stuff. It is a delicacy. You know, that's yeah. why it was only thirty seven ninety two on sale. At Trader Joe's, you get seven rocks and three cookies, and it's best if you mix them. You know, like, so Trader Joe's <laughs> living up to the hype. I'll have to tell Stephanie about this one so I can tell Amanda. I wish, <laughs> I wish that I could, I wish that I could have got some of these because I would give her rock cookies for Christmas. Uh, no problem. Yeah. I drew her, I drew her in Secret Santa, or I guess it's not secret since we all know. Uh, I grew, I drew her in, uh, for, for Christmas. And so I would not even count that towards her total. I would just add rock candy in there. How early do you guys do your drawing? It's July. We did it pretty, we did it pretty, I know we did it pretty early because we have to convince them to do it. All of them are like, no, let's buy 37 individual $17 gifts for everybody. So we're all spending a boatload of money and nobody really gets what they want. We figured if it's not the Christmas season yet and they're not in the in the mood and they're not listening to like Christmas music and have like a tree up that we can trick them into yeah. agreeing to it because it's July. Like yeah. you're saying, right? You if I asked you something about Christmas right now, you would just <laughs> acquiesce to me, right? You would just be like, Yeah, man, we'll talk Yeah. Hey, man, I got, yeah. Have, to be honest, I guys, thought you, you were talking about last Christmas. <laughs> do you hey us four, do y'all want to get together, you know, Christmas, Christmas Eve, somewhere around there? Does that sound good to you right now, Bob? Yeah, fuck, of course it does. Who's going to say no to dope, wonderful Christmas plans on, in, on July 26th? No one. There's literally no reason to say. You're going to hit me up on like yeah. December 12th and be like, oh my gosh, bro, I forgot I'm a normal human and I have things to do at the time that we planned on doing that. You know, like it's so that's the so we did it now, but they are not going to be able to back out because you've told me yes. Right, Bobby? I've already locked it in and I've got the receipts. And that's really all I needed to yeah. go with it. I needed uh okay, I guess. And then Stephanie was like, boom, writing names down and drawing it from a hat, and we sent it immediately. There's like a, it's an individual group. So it's re and then we all got iPhones. So it's named. It was supposed to be the Christmas Gifters, but it auto-corrected on Stephanie. So it actually turned out to be the Christmas Grifters. Which really works out because we ah. grifted it. We grifted everybody into our way of thinking for presents this year. So I mean, it, it's like yeah. uh, it's like double. Like Wait, Stephanie did, and I so know. did Stephanie draw names for everyone? Did Stephanie? Draw, so did she like read the name? Everyone has you and Stephanie's name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, because no, because we sent out the list. Everybody got picked. It's not a oh, secret okay. Santa. If okay. see seek because they all they're all gonna want to know. Uh, who got who we start getting into secret secret. They don't know things. People can't tell people things. And also it's a family thing. So all of the gentlemen in there are just going to tell whatever Davison woman is within reaching distance of them, what they need to do. And then that's how they'll get their gifts. Like, uh, so, it, you know, it's not, it, it's more. Bobby, I wish I could say that our thoughtfulness on Christmas is just because we're so excited to buy people gifts and, and get them something. It's more of, I'm trying Efficiency. to, I'm trying to check stuff off my list. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, this just was, yeah, uh, the most efficient twice. Way. so, so that being said, if you see like buy trade sale, sell or something, somebody selling, Hey, like a recalled rock, <laughs> rock cookies, <laughs> just, just snag them, dude. I'm willing to pay. Not a ridiculous yeah. amount, but a fair amount, like above market value, which again, they're Trader Joe's items. So yeah. they're, these are like $40, $40. Dollars retail. Yeah. $40 retail. Um, yeah. <laughs> and obviously these are special editions. So I'm willing to go 45, 50 maybe. Yeah. Uh, let's move into pop culture. Uh, 
y'all, this past weekend was Barbenheimer. It was the biggest box office, a bit biggest box office weekend since before COVID times. Um, you know, nature is healing. You know, um, yes, and it's it's great to see. Uh, the Barbie movie absolutely has made its money back, and then some in the first weekend. One of the biggest box office weekends ever for a movie. Uh, my wife went and saw it with one of her friends yesterday. She said it okay. was okay. Doesn't uh, matter, dude. You could have. Do, you uh, could I'm excited do, to see Oppenheimer. You could do an hour and a half of Margot Robbie and Ryan Re- and Ryan Reynolds, um, Ryan Gosling. Gosling. Just standing there, bro. Just standing there doing like those stupid AMC commercials that Nicole Kidman does. People would pay money to go see that for an hour and a half, dude. Um, I am it, it, but I'm what a great point. What an awesome summertime unexpected box office battle, right? You know, like Barbie and Oppenheimer um, are two things that couldn't be more in the opposite ends of the world, but really. As much as you and I love franchises and part, you know, like groups of movies and learning the stories of stuff, it really speaks to make good, good and new style of movies. Yeah. Not a franchise, you know, there's not going to be Oppenheimer 2, Revenge yeah. of the, you know, <laughs> Revenge of the Nuclear, the Oppenheimer, you know, Revenge of the <laughs> Revenge of Japan or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're telling a story that's uh, that's an important story that people should see uh, or something like Barbie that is in that's been in our world, whether we played with them or didn't play with them or knew somebody that played with them. That's been in our world since we've been born. Right. We know Barbie. We know Ken. Uh, and so to expand that to the next generation and have such make it such a quality effort, you know, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. And a, a whole crew of people to make this a success. What well, it's awesome! It's really awesome, yeah. and I will yeah. not be seeing either in theaters. And I am thankful, but I will absolutely well, watch both of them when they come out. Yeah, see, I'm not. I'd rather yeah, sit at my ex- house and watch that. I'm super know? excited to see Oppenheimer. I am too. Um, I am too. But, but I just so don't think it's one a thing theater I, movie yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I am super uh, thankful for is that it was released during the writer's strike so that we do not have to sit through the what would 100% be the most cringeworthy thing ever, which would be the SNL skit combining Barbie and Oppenheimer uh, right. movies because they would have done it and it would have been Absolutely. so bad and it would have been now, all over social media for weeks. Now, hold on. It would have been awful unless it was Margot Robbie and Cillian Murphy actually Okay, yes, of guessing. course. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you get the yeah. folk that would be and great. then like that would see, that would be, that's how you, that's how you handle it. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, writer, writer strike going on. That's uh that's a big deal. Um, as much as I'm frustrated by it and as w- much as I, all, all I can think about is all of the projects that I know that I've been waiting for that it's slowing down for me. Um, but that being said, I have, so many hundreds of thousands of hours of content that I'm like, Oh, I want to watch that. 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 I will probably be fine, Bob. So I'm actually for it. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Cause I also am in, in agreement. You can hate, you know, movies and the new style of movies and stuff, but at very least I want a person writing it. You know, I don't want these, uh, I want the actual human emotion that comes from the writing, not just some AI written program that, put Quentin Tarantino and M night Shyamalan and, you know, George Clooney and all this stuff into a compiler. And it just gives me what I think I want. I mean, we've seen algorithms, algorithm rhythms are garbage, Bobby, uh, you know, Facebook algorithm, Reddit algorithm, you know, Google out. They're all garbage. Math ain't never told me nothing. I, you know, I didn't already know. <laughs> Um, but you know, one of the things that this is causing, um, obviously I, you know, I, I, we stand with the unions and, and, you know, they're striking right now, but what this is going to cause is obviously a lot more reality shows are having to pop up and, and does those don't need the writers. Um, I think I, I saw, uh, I think I said, uh, saw that, um, uh, Julie Chen Moonves, uh, tweeted something like there, uh, is going to be some different surprises than usual. 
and a longer Big Brother season, perhaps, to fill yes. that time. Uh, yes, the, the, that, the, uh, the only time Big Brother ever did a winter season was during a writer strike, and because it is literally need it needs editors uh, to tell a narrative or whatever. But I mean, for the most part other than like seven, maybe like five, six hours a day, there's live feeds going on forever. So like, if you want the true narrative, you can always get yeah. that. Um, so, Hey, uh, you know, as I'm like, I'm kind of like you, like, Oh great. More reality show. But like, we're in a world now where a new reality show doesn't mess with our programming or whatever. They don't put it on like TBS, yeah. uh, you know, what we're having to watch and like, Oh great. A new reality show they're really ruining vh1 we just don't watch it now so um uh, yeah that is the that is the glorious uh, thing. Speaking but, of but that, let's i didn't mean in. to stop you from complaining yeah. complain away that's what we're here for <laughs> i'll always complain uh but let's uh let, well i wasn't complaining i was actually i was dope for this i'm excited for a longer big brother season that means more big brother fantasy so that was i was not complaining at all uh you are our, our previous champ, that, right? let's move into what uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, by yeah, like a you dominated like a large margin. You dom. Somebody made. I think Megan made a little little comeback towards the end, but um, I think I was like, yeah. But I think like I think yeah, pretty early. I, I still had four players while two people were almost fully out. Yeah. So, um, but let's move into what are you binging? Uh, the wife and I started a new show on Netflix. Very good. Can't believe we waited till it was uh, after two seasons, but I kind of happy I am because so we can binge it. Uh, it is the uh second series of vikings uh it's called vikings valhalla it takes place 100 years after the original vikings uh series it's like and the it industrial is, revolution it or is something. absolutely fa- it's like the renaissance like he's just following <laughs> da vinci <laughs> no no, no that's it's super it's dope. like in the ele- i think it's in like yeah but it's really good i've heard that i've heard that it was good for me i've like i said last week bro even harder like I'm getting, you know, I'm getting to that Brandon phase where he's got into something and like he gets into it, bro. So NBA 20, uh, 2K23, yeah. getting excited for 24 to come out, uh, you know, just pushing my guy. Look, man, uh, you know, six, nine slashing, you know, shooting forward, you know, playmaker. I, I'm finally starting, Bob. I'm averaging 36 points a, a game, se- seven assists, eight rebounds, three steals. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm on the Grizzlies. And so it was like a perfect slot in. It's got a great lineup with Morant, Bain, and obviously, uh, me and then Jaron Jackson and Steven Adams. We are, since I've become a starter, we are on a 32 game winning streak. Um, I'm like third, <laughs> I'm like third in all-star voting. Uh, so, you know, I'm just, I'm just digging in bro. Like, uh, I go to all the team practices, nice. you know what I'm saying? Like I do all the, do all the stuff I'm supposed to do. I'm working on stuff. So, um, I wish I could say it was something else, but, uh, Stephanie and I, we did finish. I rewatched severance with her, the Adam Scott, um, okay. Apple TV show where yeah guy goes to work and then your work your work your work person is your any yeah and like he's at work and like honestly there's not you know they obviously the whole story is like some of these innies rebelling and not wanting to do this because imagine bob like you just like wake up but like and you're sort of conscious and you know things and like somebody tells you like what you do is work now like bro like that ain't gonna work for this version of me or whatever like i am absolutely not doing that forever like i you know the reason that the audi me did this is so he didn't have to work obviously understanding that somebody was gonna have to work for eight hours and i'll (laughs) tell you what it ain't gonna be this version of, of brandon so um she, we really enjoyed that. <laughs> Obviously, writer strike has affected that, but um, again, not worried. I think we're going to start uh, the foundation on um, Apple TV as well. Actually, Hijack is coming out week to yeah, week. Yeah, I think so I, I saw that. that. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I've seen. I've seen. I was scrolling and I saw that. It looks good. Foundation finally an Apple show that has like three seasons. You know what I'm saying? Like I can actually binge it. We watched <laughs> Silo yeah. one season. We picked up Hijack and we got to watch like four episodes 
And then I realized, oh, it's coming out on a week to week basis. We were just a month behind and now we're having to watch it week to week. Yeah. Um, you know, so severance is only one season. So finally the foundation has three seasons and I've heard it's really good. And Apple is still in that early phase where they are not, they don't have a whole ton of stuff, but everything they're doing is just fire. You know what I'm saying? Like you remember that those Netflix days oh, in yeah. the beginning when like it, you know, Oh, you hear, see that new Netflix show that they put out? Like, no, but obviously I'm gonna, you don't have to tell me about it because it's a banger for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's move into what's snapping their stick. Bobby and Brandon are about to find out exactly what snaps their sticks. Dude, I don't know how people do it. Obviously, I'm going to adjust because I'm a champion. The champions adjust. But holy shit, man. Uh, I'm on day two of waking up at super early in a row, and it's not great. Um, you know, obviously, during the summer with practice and stuff, you know, it was all different times of day. But now, you know, we're on morning practices. And then on Monday, you know, so I got, you know, school starts at 830. Got to be there at like 715. I mean, I'm getting up at like six. Uh, it's rough. It's real rough when uh, my schedule for the last three or four years have been waking up at 11 p.m. I wish I felt bad for you, Bob. Welcome to the land of the living, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, you know, I don't want you want me to say like, oh, poor, poor little sir, you have to have a job. But, you know, I don't know what you want me to say, Bobby. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just talking. I didn't have anything, but we were just talking NBA 20, uh, 2K23. The storyline is so ridiculous. Essentially, you pick whatever team you want to get drafted onto. And so on draft night, you get drafted by whatever team you picked is the 18th right. pick in the draft. And you get booed when you go up there because they wanted this guy, Shep Owens, who goes after you in the draft. And so you have this like, this like beef that they've like created type of deal between again, the 18th and 19th pick, like not like uh, then there was even a comment like where, you know, they have the show, like this hot take where Kendrick Perkins and JJ and Stan are on there talking about you and Shep Owens. And somebody was like, well, I mean, 18 other teams passed on Shep Owens as well, but like your fans hate you. And so you have to like come back. And so I'm okay with that part of the storyline but it doesn't matter if you go out there in the summer league game where you play Shep Owens and drop 30 on him and like just destroy him and you're clearly you know the better pick there's always this oh did they make the right choice or is the fans gonna like him or whatever it's like bro I'm dropping 36 a night there's one person averaging <laughs> more point more points than me oh by the way did we even mention anybody that while everybody else is playing 12 minute quarters, your boys over here averaging 20 minutes a game. And he's doing this like on a per <laughs> on a per 36 minute basis in the stats. I'm dropping 63 points a game. You know what I'm saying? Like, so not, I, I'm not thinking for like all of the different situations, but maybe like one, two or three situations where like, oh, you're garbage and Shep Owens is destroying you or, oh, it's middle of the ground. Like it could really go either way or, Oh bro, you're finna be MVP. This race has been won. Like the Memphis fans need to shut up. So <laughs> that is my, uh, my complaint. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But all right guys. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, stay up to date on our social media. Our release day may be changing in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but for Brandon, I'm Bobby. This has been Pucks Out Podcast. We'll see you all again next time. Good luck to you, Bob. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Pucks Out Podcast. To see what other ridiculousness the guys are up to, check them out on Twitter and Instagram at Pucks Out Pod.